Welcome to Kitchen Table Electronics, Lesson 3.2, Python Programming. We are going to use what we have learned about the Python programming language to write uh, a couple of example programs that will be used later in this class. You can use these programs and modify them uh, as you want for specific applications. Uh, let me just say that this code is not uh, generated de novo. I stole many of the routines uh, by searching for how to do things on Google and various Python's websites and played with examples in the interpreter to make sure they worked and, and put the code together in this way. And this is how you should proceed in modifying the code uh, for your own purposes. The first project is going to be very simple. We're going to write a code to do something you do all the time in lab classes, which is given a list of numbers, calculate a mean value and a standard deviation. Just to add a little twist to this though, we are going to take the data to do this uh, rather than from the keyboard, which would be very tedious, from a file we will have saved <clears throat> as a text file on our computer, and we're going to open it using a Windows dialog box. So there'll be a little bit of a use of a GUI in this uh, first project. In the second project, we're going to write a very uh, useful program for uh, many lab applications, which is <clears throat> given some set of uh, y as a function of x data, um, how does a particular model look when fitted to the data? So we're going to use the example of a noisy Gaussian distribution of y values uh, against uh, x, and uh, then a fit for the Gaussian with the optimum values returned by the program. You can use this program uh, as modified later on in the class to fit, for example, uh, the frequency response of a capacitor and resistor uh, circuit. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into the coding. If you go onto the resources page for lesson three on Python programming, you will find a text file uh, with the statistics.py uh, program uh, in the text file. It's been uh, pasted into Notepad. So you can cut this and paste this straight into your Python uh, interpreter, or editor rather. You will notice, i.e. the idle editor. You'll notice when you do this that the text file, which is just simple black and white text uh, in my uh, notepad text file, becomes colored according to the conventions we discussed uh, earlier once you paste it into idle. And unless uh, something strange is going on with your paste, you should be able to run it right away. So what this will do is to open a list um, of variables. Uh, it actually says a commas, comma separated variable list. Um, it doesn't do this in this particular program. It's just a simple list of numbers, but you will use a comma se separated variable list um, in the second program we encounter. So it reads a straight list of numbers and converts it to a float array. Uh, one uh, calculation done once the numbers are read in is to return the number of points in the list. This is done with a Python function called len. The mean function, which comes from the uh, numpy package in uh, scientific Python, uh, will just give you the mean and the standard deviation extracts the standard deviation. So you don't actually have to do any calculations at all. The program consists of opening the file, uh, converting the numbers that it takes to be strings, of course, into floats, and putting them into an array, and then performing the calculations listed here. So to analyze your own data, you'd save it as a text file uh, with each data point on a separate line and you can create this in notepad if you're recording data in the lab for example and then just run the program. So let's run through the program and take a look at what's in it. So first of all the notepad file containing numbers this is just uh, a screenshot of the first few numbers in the file there are quite a few numbers in it 
And what I did was to uh, create this array of numbers, save them into Notepad, and I put it in a folder which I called test data. And to make life simple, I put it in the main C directory on my uh, Windows 10 uh, tablet. And uh, when I opened the uh, Windows file browser, I pointed at the C directory so I see test data right away. So I don't have to go searching for files related to this class. So um, let's take a look at the things you will see when you paste uh, statistics1.py into your idle editor. First of all, you see a list of comments, uh, which tells you uh, what the program does, and uh, then uh, some notes about how I've set the file up so that I can uh, make it easy to read. The following statements are import statements, so from, and then the name of some toolkit import uh, various things. Um, I've imported a special tool from TK Inter called File Dialog. This is a specially written chunk of code for opening uh, the Windows file dialog, and you have to import it specifically. If from the TK Inter graphical user interface toolkit you import star, you'd think you'd get everything, um, but File Dialog is an add on you have to uh, import specially. CSV is uh, another Python package, which is for uh, CSV file handling, comma separated variable file uh, handling. We're using it here only for one function, which is a function called a uh, reader. And reader reads a line at a time from the file. And I've imported now from the NumPy package statistics. And uh, statistics uh, is the uh, package that gives us the mean and standard deviation tools. Okay, so we are now going to open a window uh, to open our input uh, data file. So to do this, I defined a function uh, which I've called uh, open txt file. So that's this blue function right here. And I've done it with the usual define and then you'll see at the bottom of this, only part of the function is on this page, there is a return, and that ends the definition of the function, and I then go all the way back to the left of the editor to start the rest of the program. Um, just a note here, uh, programs that contain Windows all uh, execute from one user action, so usually a button uh, is pushed by the user on some uh, dialog box on the screen, and that calls a uh, function. And so one defines all of the code in a set of appropriate functions first, and then opens the main window and waits for a user action. So the first statement here, root equals TK uh, of parenthesis, this uh, creates a um, window or a widget uh, called root. So this contains the tools from the TK dialog box, and root is just a name to point to TK. In the TK toolkit is a uh, tool called, or a, a module called withdraw. So as uh, you now know for object-oriented programming, if I extract this method by writing root.withdraw, I get the withdraw function from the TK toolkit and what this does is it turns off the default window that is created by the TK widget. So the TK interface toolbox always brings up by, uh, starts by bringing up its default window, and we don't want that. We want the Windows file dialog, so I've closed it off uh, straight away. Okay, so now I go uh, root.filename, so I'm now extracting from the TK uh, inter toolbox the file name method, and I'm assigning values to file name here using file dialog. Uh, so this comes from that file uh, opening dialog that we called uh, earlier, loaded into the code with an import statement, dot ask open file name, and then a list of parameters. So you'll see this initial dir equals c colon backslash. This points it to the um, 
This points it to the C uh, directory and uh, gives the window a title select file. And we are looking for text files um, and we've actually included here the possibility of all files. Uh, so a dot star for the uh, extension or yeah, star dot star. Root file name um, then returns the name uh, selected in the file, a dialog. And so we now assign to a variable called f here, a root dot file name. So f is uh, the now the file name that's been extracted from the Windows dialog. And so now we can open a file uh, called, which is the, use, the, using the open um, method. And the arguments of method uh, are, the open method are uh, the file name f and the uh, r means read only. So let's continue with this open text file subroutine. Um, so we're going to want to read the file in one line at a time once we've opened it. So <clears throat> here we go, we have called this uh, CSV, if you remember, module, a comma set of variable uh, file toolkit dot reader. And so this is the method that reads a single line at a time. I'm defining a global variable here, uh, xlist. Why did I do this? Well, remember we are in a subroutine at the moment and I'm going to want to access xlist from other parts of the program. So I've called it global here so I can get at it from another part of the program. I assign to xlist the uh, values as first of all, line of zero. What does this mean? This means that the line that is being read, line of zero, reads the first element in the line. It doesn't matter too much for this program, but you'll see when we get to reading x and y values as pairs in a comma setted variable, um, file format, then we will use an index to step through entries on the line. But we're just reading the first entry, which of course with the naming convention in Python for an index is the zeroth line. The float function takes the float value of the string it finds as that entry on the line. And then finally we do a loop here and this is this beautiful compact Python coding for line in reader. So as long as a line exists in reader, uh, this uh, instruction here will execute assigning sequential values to this array xlist. Finally, I must close the file I'd opened, must always do this, and this is done with the close method. So uh, from the uh, tools pointed to by file, I select the method close by writing file.close, and then the subroutine um, returns the value xlist. So this was the definition of the open text function. And so now we can get on with the main program. And glory, glory, hallelujah, this is all there is to the main program, partly because of the um, density of instructions encoded in various Python libraries. So here we go. I call my function open text file and then that will return for me xlist. So then I carry out calculations on xlist. You notice I have this in a try except loop in case there is something wrong with the file when we try and open it. So as long as the file opens properly, then these, these uh, lines will execute here. And so we have here uh, the length function, which returns an integer equal to the number of elements in xlist. So I know how many elements there are. Um, then I calculate the mean, and I do that from the NumPy statistics package by extracting the method mean statistics.mean of xlist. And that is it. Now mean is set equal to the mean of that list. Standard deviation equals statistics.stdev of xlist and out comes a standard deviation. Here's my exception statement, try except, so if there's an invalid input, 
and then I uh, give here the number of lines that were read. And then I go on to end the program, but with a print statement. So remember these rather um, messy, I think, Python format statements. I have a string here, the mean is equal to, and then these curly brackets here are the format statements. So it tells me to take uh, element zero of the items to be printed out and print it as uh, five uh, integers with three to the right of the decimal point uh, and in float uh, format. And then standard deviation, now here I'm taking element one in the variable list that occurs at the end of the print statement and once again printing it as five digits with three to the right of the decimal point floating point and then n as two digits with um, five to the right of the uh, or five uh, decimal places to the right of the um, of the uh, decimal point and this dot format after the string in the print statement is what inserts these values, the mean as the zeroth element here and the standard deviation as the first element and n as the third element in the print statement. Okay, so let's try it. So we paste the code into our idle and then we click the run button at the uh, top of the idle panel and that will bring up the Python shell. And so here you will see the program being run and the result of opening the Windows uh, file dialog is to bring up this um, panel here. And so you can see I've pointed in uh, C colon and uh, I've actually gone to test data so here we are, or, or where I will find test data. And I then point to my file statistics.py and open it with the standard Windows dialog and it returns the mean, standard deviation and the number of points in the file. Now the statistics um, uh, file that I used in statistics.txt is available to you on the class resources page for this module. So if you download that and run the program on it, you can make sure everything is working by checking that you got these values uh, returned. Okay, so um, that was simple because we have all the code to hand and hopefully you can play with it and uh, use it as a, a, a way of expanding the code to do more useful things for you, as you might imagine. Uh, you can pull out any number you want to using the various functions you will find online in the Python statistics package. How about some data fitting? So once again, you'll often get, when you do a measurement, uh, a graph of y values as a function of some uh, x, and you will want to fit it to a model. So for example, we will look at the frequency dependence, as I said, of an RC circuit. So here we're going to do a Gaussian fit. Gaussians are very uh, common in physical science uh, data. And I've generated a noisy uh, Gaussian data set as a list of X and Y values in a comma set of variable file. And uh, you will, will do the same. When we start taking data automatically with our Arduino, we can write it into comma separated variable files. And so uh, you can use this code, as I say, with a Gaussian, I've shown you how to do it, but you can define other functions for applications later in the class. So what we're going to do first is open a window to plot the data and then another window to plot the fitted data. And then we're also going to pop up a radio button box to ask, do you want to fit the data or do you want to quit? So the idea here is you can plot the data you've just taken, and there's a wonderful set of pi plot routines that do everything for you. You can then look at the data, save it if you want to, save the plot if you want to, uh, and if you decide you want to fit it with your function, uh, you can go ahead and press the radio button to, to fit. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit awkward about the program in the form I've left it now is if on looking at your data in the first window, 
you decide your starting parameters for the fit um, are not close to what is inside the program, then you'll have to go in and modify them in the Python code. And so a nice addition to this program, and maybe I'll leave it as a challenge for the more Python inspired in the class, is to build a little Windows dialog box to play with fitting parameters and then put the fit itself inside a try except um, a loop so that if the starting fitting parameters don't work well, you can go back and play with them. Okay, so go to the class resources page and uh, load the text file called plot and fit gauss v2.txt and load it into your uh, idle editor and uh, we'll take it from there. So now um, let's have a look at the program itself. I've put a lot uh, of comments here uh, telling you what function is fitted. So here is the Gaussian, it's actually a constant um, plus a Gaussian. Uh, this np.exp is because I am extracting my exponential function from the numpy package. I don't actually have to do this, um, but I found this to be the most reliable way of calculating exponentials in uh, Python. So once again, NP points to the numerical Python package. So here is my Gaussian. Here's a scaling factor B and a constant added A. Uh, the starting uh, guesses for the parameters for this fit are embedded in the program. And these lines here tell you where to find the various components of the program that you might want to change uh, for uh, fitting it to a different function or having a different number of starting parameters. So uh, let's start the code. We import all the packages we're going to need. File dialog again, because we're going to open a file. Uh, TK enter again, because we're going to be opening Windows. A CSV again, because we're not only going to be using reader, but we're going to be reading uh, uh, comma separated variables. And then we're going to, from matplotlib, incorporate the pyplot package as PLT. We're going to import the numerical pi package and we're just calling it MP. So numpy now becomes MP. So any occurrence of MP in the program means from the numerical pi package. And then scipy, scientific Python package, contains the optimize uh, package, which includes the curve fit method, which is what we are going to use. And once again, you'll actually have no mathematical code to write at all because it's all contained in those methods. Okay, so we're going to open the CSV file. This is exactly like the code before. Uh, we uh, create a root window but withdraw it and then we open a file dialog window with this line here uh, exactly as before. Um, now there's a little difference here. We specifically destroy this window once we have um, extracted the file or opened the file and the reason for that is that it turns out that the pi plot windows interfere with other windows opened in the TK interface uh, module um, in ways that leaves you stuck in windows you can't close. And so destroying uh, an extra window at this point, uh, because we're going to open the pi plot window later, um, stops that from happening. How did I know this? The answer is I kept getting stuck with a spare window on the screen and uh, went crazy searching Google until I found this suggestion online. Okay, so once again, I open the file with the file name f that's been returned uh, by the uh, root.filename method. And now I open the, uh, the reader uh, as csv.reader method of the file name. So now um, I have uh, two loops to read here. First of all, I loop through the list just as before, reading the zeroth element, taking the float of it, and setting that element of uh, um, X list equal to it, with the loop being defined by this four line in reader. 
So then I close the file and open it again. And uh, this turns out to be the most reliable way of going back up to the top, at least that I found. And now I do the whole thing the same way again, except where a zero was here, I've put a one. And this then uh, takes the second element on the line, which is the list of Y variables. So essentially what we did in the previous program, but with just an extra step here to read in Y variables. Okay, um, I've written a couple of functions here to make the rest of the program easy. One is called quit and close, uh, which is specifically to quit and close and withdraw uh, the radio button window. Once again, this is the interference of windows created in PyPlot with windows opened elsewhere in the program. So it is just uh, master.withdraw, master.quit. So very simple. Um, then another function here, and this is key, this is the function being fitted. So here's the parameter list, and here is the, um, the function itself. And then in the program, I define as constants uh, these values for these parameters here. So if you're gonna rewrite this program to fit another function, you would define the function here, and then you would make the appropriate parameter list um, here. Okay, this is the main program. So we call uh, the function we wrote earlier, open CSV file. And so that now uh, opens the file dialog and um, you can then choose the uh, Gaussian uh, text file that I suggested you download uh, from the class resources page. So that's a list of X and Y values, it loads it in. So now, just as a result of this line here, the two lists, X list and Y list, are now populated. And <clears throat> the PyPlot um, uh, toolkit has in it the plot method. So PLT pointed to the PyPlot toolkit. Uh, the dot plot method is the thing that does the plot. So the variables are X variables X list, Y variables Y list. And I don't remember what this switch is. This line style, so no lines, we're gonna put dots. Here's my marker, a circle, the marker size and a label data. So you could change the way the plot looks here if you want to. And incidentally, there are many other parameters you could put into this. The X and Y variable uh, positions are fixed, but all these other parameters are defined by strings and so, go ahead and make your own custom plots by looking up uh, the options in the dot plot method uh, in Python uh, online. Okay, so um, now we are going to define uh, some uh, other features of the plot. So we are going to uh, make an X label X, so you could label this uh, frequency, for example, and plot.y label, you could label this uh, amplitude maybe. And then we have a legend and plot.show method uh, to allow the plot to appear. And then the next, um, so this now makes the plot appear on the screen. Notice that in this uh, code using the um, plot library from Python, I've not actually explicitly created a window. And this is one of the reasons uh, it's had a hard time dealing with the uh, opening of other windows in other parts of the programs using the TK into toolkit. Because of course it does actually call on TK into, um, but it's hidden from you uh, in those uh, plot methods uh, that we just looked at. So the plot will now have appeared. And so now I want to create uh, a new window. And so I have a, uh, an object here called master, which I've set equal to the TK into toolkit. And uh, now what I've done is I have an integer variable um, int var, which can be set according to which radio button I press. So I then set this little window up with two radio buttons. So once again, you can go online and see what the format for radio button instructions are. 
but first of all the root window master and then the text here fit data the variable v's associated with the button and um, then the uh, initial value uh, one or the value one returned by that button and the command associated with that button is quit and close and so what that does is once you have pressed the button um, it will quit and close the window um, the dot pack is just the way that the buttons were arranged on the window and you can look that up uh, again in the Python uh, library. Then there's a second radio button uh, defined in this window, which is quit and the value associated with this variable then is two and once again command and quit dot back. Okay, so now we come to the main program. This always begins in GUI oriented programs with the instruction main loop. Main loop is part of the TK interface toolkit and what it does is it opens whatever the master window is and sits there until you have given it some instruction. So this is called once and uh, only once and so then what happens in the main window depends on the values that were given to this variable called v here. So if V is zero, um, we, something went wrong with our radio button window and we print an error. Now, if V is one, by the way, notice once again, as a reminder, equals equals one means that if V is equal to one, remember a single equals a sign is the assignment operator in Python. So then we go and do this stuff. Or else if V was two, we just finish. And remember we quit and close this window. So we leave the program. If we said quit, we don't execute any of this code. All right, what does this code do? So this now plots, or sets up a plot with an X list and a Y list and the same uh, default values. And then uh, if you, um, okay, this comment here is just to let you know that if you want to have extra parameters in your curve fit, so you'll see this P0 here, you'd have to list them here as well as defining <coughs> their values elsewhere in the program. So we call these uh, functions um, from the scientific Python package, uh, Popt and Pcov. Popt is the optimum parameter values starting with these values um, and it returns then the values that give the best fit to the experimental data. PCOV gives the covariance, the matrix, which is the uh, correlation between all of the parameters. The diagonal values are the square of the standard deviations you'll want to quote if you want to know how good your fit is. And then we set up a plot here. Uh, and this plot now is for the, um, function and what we're doing here is as a function of x list we are plot plotting the function with the optimized uh, parameters and we are lab setting up a label here with the actual values we got um, oh a point that's worth mentioning here you'll notice this formatting is different from the formatting i showed you before where you had curly braces inside the string with, for example, uh, 5.3, and then before that, an index 0, 1, or 2 pointing to the um, element in the format statement. Uh, here we have none of that. Um, we actually refer to the variables with these um, little percent signs here. This is the old fashioned uh, Python way of doing formatting, but it's what's stuck inside matplotlib, at least at this point uh, in time. Um, and so these pointers here refer to this tuple of parameters, Popt, which is the parameter list. Okay, so we plot the labels again, and a legend, no legend in this case, and then plot.show shows the plot, where remember now we have one plot of the experimental data and a second plot here of the fit. 
and that's it. And uh, we've then asked it to print this tuple p opt and this tuple p covariance. So let's do it. Okay, so we run the program. So please run it in your idle editor. I um, have opened here my test data folder and here's the gaussian.txt. So I open that and this is what comes up. Here is a plot of the data in that file. And notice, by the way, that there are tools built into the PyPlot window. So for example, you can save the data, pan around, zoom in, and so on. Um, so once you've looked at it and decided, yep, this is data I want to fit, and my parameter values that I put into the program are about right, once again, it would be much nicer if I'd spent the time to allow you to do this in another interactive window, but I didn't. So now you're asked whether you want to fit the data or quit. So you might decide your parameter values are just gonna keep the program guessing forever, and so you might wanna quit, and go in, edit the parameter values, and then come back and fit the data. So if you click the fit data button though, lo and behold, this is what you get. The uh, line here is that line specified in the second of the two um, plot statements in the, uh, the loop for uh, chosen when the uh, value of the radio button was one. And here are the fitting parameters, the optimum value of fits. And you can once again save this and then when you finish the program in your idle editor, you will get a list of the optimized parameters. Here they are formatted as in that print statement. And then the um, covariance matrix, which is the covariance between, for example, um, parameter one and parameter one is the standard deviation here. Two and two is standard deviation here. Here is the covariance between one and two. So you'll see these numbers along the diagonal. If you take the square root of these, you'll get the standard deviation of the appropriate uh, parameters. So that is it. These are a couple of Python programs you can play with. And the next thing we're going to do is to learn how to control Arduinos in Python. And then we're gonna make some electrical measurements with our Arduinos. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of Kitchen Table Electronics.